What's up everybody, in this video I'm gonna show you how I set up a new Logic Pro installation, for example on a new computer or you just uh, reinstall your system or something like this. A uh, couple of tips and tricks on that make my life more efficient, that makes it a little bit faster to use it every day. So let's uh, let's get into it. Uh, the way you get actually in that uh, fresh state, if you want to, is you go into uh, Logic Pro menu, preference and reset all preference. Uh, and then you restart it so you get in this fresh state all the default settings. Uh, and then I'm going to show you what I like to do with it. So the first thing is uh, in this choose a project menu. Uh, what I would do normally is just create a project here and then you can go into the project logic preference and project preference. And the problem if you do that is it's going to remember it only on the project uh, that you created. But then the next time you want to create a new project, you're starting from scratch again. Uh, and uh, one thing that makes my life a lot easier is to uh, set the settings in this little details menu right there. It's something that took me a long time to notice actually. It turns out like uh, when you change settings here, it's a uh, global project settings for logic and every new project you're going to create are also going to uh, remember those and that's really cool. So for example, for me it's gonna be uh, two things, the input device here. Uh, I put my sound card here because I record with my sound card. Uh, output is already the good one so that's, uh, that's cool. And then the sample rate, I like to set it to 48 kilohertz. Uh, why I do that is because I, I mostly make uh, YouTube videos and uh, the standard pretty much online for video is to use audio with a 48 kilohertz sample rate. Uh, if you were to uh, record, for example, audio CD, I think you would get 44.1 or like feel free to even get the higher ones, whatever makes sense for you. For me, it's 48 kilohertz. So that's it for this part. And uh, then when you create that project, you get prompted to add the first track and we get the exact same, uh, exact same thing here. Um, this kind of menu, if we change the details, it's going to remember them for not only for all the new tracks in this project, but also for every new project you're gonna create as well. So it's cool to go here and like open the details menu uh, and change whatever you like. For me, it's gonna be just one thing. There's not that many settings here. It's gonna be the input. I want to be recording from input two by default on my sound card. Uh, the reason for this is uh, I have two inputs and the second one is the one that have a switch to turn on high impedance. And basically for guitar, electric guitar and bass, uh, you want the high impedance input if you have it. Uh, you get like a higher, higher quality sound or you get more, uh, more sensitivity to the sound and that's pretty, that's, that's what we want, that's pretty good. So I just put input two here and then I create this uh, instrument and the good thing with that is uh, you see it's like uh, right there actually. If I was to play something, See, it's uh, well recognized. You don't hear it because um, because I don't record my uh, system sound. But anyways, if I was to create a new guitar, you see, it's like already on input two. We can now close this details menu, anyways. And uh, on the next project I create, it's gonna be already input two by default, so I never have to touch this again, pretty much. Uh, instead of you know having to go manually here every time and like having to switch. So that's pretty good. That's we gain some uh, efficiency here. There's another more common way of doing this, which would be to use a uh, project template. So uh, what you would do is you would create a new project like I just did. You set all your settings uh, the way you like it. And then you would go in the uh, save as template right there. That allows you to give it a name. Uh, it saves it into the logic project templates. And then the next time you want to create a new project, instead of going to in new, you would go in new from templates. Uh, and then all your list would be here in my templates. Uh, so you can create as many as you want. You can go in like much deeper settings. Like uh, if you wanted to have multiple tracks and uh, maybe some kind of presets, some plugins already, uh, already prepared for you, that can be a, uh, an even better way to improve your productivity. But uh, for me, as far as I'm concerned, I only care about the most basic project settings, which turned out, uh, turned out to be right there in the, in the little detail section I showed you. So for me, that's even simpler, it's even easier. I don't need to maintain my own catalog of uh, project templates and so on. It's just out of the box right there. Uh, and that's, that's really good for me. That's why I wanted to share it with you. I think it's not a very well-known trick as well. And uh, yeah, as, uh, as you noticed, like it's very hard actually to find this, um, this menu here, because by default, if you do file new or something like this, you don't often see it. Uh, and so if you want to see this menu, it's actually by doing new from template, you get access to the whole new project, recent, the starter grid, tutorial, demo, everything. Uh, so that's how you can get to this little detail section if you're looking for it and you don't really know where to find it. And uh, another thing is going to be about the bounce setting, the export setting. You can click here on bounce or like when you go into, uh, what is it, file, bounce, 
uh, project. Uh, here, I like to change two things. I put the file format to WAVE. I'm not really sure why I do that. Maybe like uh, AIFF wasn't supported by Premiere Pro, which is what I use to make the videos by default. Or maybe it is actually, I don't remember. But I just, by habit, I put WAVE. Doesn't really matter. The main, main, most important thing right there is gonna be normalize. Uh, it's on by default. I absolutely always turn it off. Uh, what is this doing? Basically, when you have a mix, and uh, usually you keep a little bit of headroom, uh, so that's gonna be like the maximum peak of decibels of your whole mix. Usually it doesn't reach zero, and reach zero is like the maximum the maximum peak you can have on an audio file, basically. So usually you leave like a, a bit of headroom, it never goes all the way to the top. And when you turn normalize on, uh, logic is gonna analyze your mix, and then it's gonna identify where is the loudest peak. And uh, then it's gonna add gain to everything so that your loudest peak is always zero, which is a cool thing to do, I guess, if you want to have like the, the loudest sounding exported file. Uh, but what I don't like about it is that it's not consistent. Like let's say after you export it once, you go back to, uh, to logic and then you change, uh, you change a bit of settings, you like mix a bit differently, you add a new instrument or something like this. Your loudest peak is probably gonna be somewhere different. And then it's gonna add more or less gain at the end to compensate for it. And then your wall mix is not gonna sound consistent with the previous one. It's gonna be either more loud or less loud depending on where that one peak was identified. And that's not good, I don't realize this. So I always turn uh, normalize off. And what I do instead, if I want really to make it the loudest possible, uh, I would go into the main, uh, the main channel here. Uh, the master channel is it called maybe and I would go add an adaptive limiter and uh, here you have like a bunch of gauge to monitor how uh, like the volume the decibels of your sound you identify like how much headroom you have and you can add extra gain here as much as you need uh, and you can even go a bit over zero if you want to because the limiter is going to limit everything to zero it's just going to crop the, the top of the of the music of the sound um, and this way you can make it sound a bit more loud. You don't want to abuse it, obviously, like don't put it all the way or something, but with that, it allows you to, uh, to get a louder mix while having a consistent output. Even if you come back to it and you change different things earlier in the mix, this is gonna ensure it's, uh, it stays consistent between exports. Very important for me. Usually I just click optimal look ahead, optimal look ahead true peak detection, and that's how, that's how I do it. So that's it for this part. Uh, the two other things I like to do on the fresh Logic installations are gonna be about uh, disk usage, about the space, because Logic comes with a huge sound library. That's actually one of the things I really like about Logic is by default, it comes with so many uh, different uh, settings, patches. I, I think it's like if I was to take a, a software instrument, for example, right there, it comes with Hello. Yeah, it comes with so many like different bass, drum, guitar, like uh, horn strings, or everything. It's like really, really good. But it's got so many sounds that's taking so much space. And uh, this space, you find it in the sound library right there. Uh, if you click uh, relocate sound library, it's gonna compute the size. You see, it's already like yeah, it's seventy, basically seventy gigs. Uh, it's taking a bunch of space. In my case, I have a SSD for my system and the SSD is like 250 gigs. So I don't have that much room on there. And if I have like 70 taken by just logic, that's, that's not what I want, you know? So I've done it already. I've moved it uh, in the past to that HDD directory, but I'm just showing you, you can find it here in relocate sound library. By default, it's gonna be on your system directory, system drive. You can move it to an external hard drive, to an other internal hard drive if you have a desktop like me. Uh, and that's that's good. It saves space for your main main drive, your SSD, whatever it is. So you just click relocate. It takes a while, and that's how that's how it works. How it works actually is it would put it here. I relocated on my HDD directory. It's just gonna create this library uh, folder here, and then you get like the all the GarageBand, Logic, everything that's taking the 70 gigs is right there. But one thing I noticed, and I wanted also to share with you kind of as a bonus in uh, this video, is there's still an extra thing taking room in Logic by default and they don't allow you to move it anywhere else. And you can actually move it by yourself. Uh, if we go into the slash library directory, I'm using the terminal here, uh, I have this command that allows me to analyze my drive and tells me what, uh, 
what takes the most space. And uh, in this library directory, you're going to see the audio directory is taking uh, 9 gigs pretty much uh, with Apple loops and impulse response. So that's like all the audio loops that come by default and impulse response is about the reverb, like this sampled so many different room conditions, how they react to sound and so on. And they store it in this like uh, 1.3 gigs. And that even is uh, taking extra space on my SSD. They don't allow me to move it, but I would like to move it. So how we're going to do that? We open a new Finder window. Uh, we go into uh, into my uh, main drive library audio. And then you see Apple Loops and uh, Impulse Response. That's, why that's what's taking the room. And we see here we're on my, uh, my hard drive where I have much more space. Uh, so we're just going to mirror like the so I think it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to create a audio directory here to keep everything uh, everything the same. And then those two directories, we're going to move them here. What I do is I drag drag and drop them. I hold the option, not the command, sorry, I hold the command uh, key at the same time. So it moves them away instead of copying them. Uh, it's going to ask for my password. And, uh, and then it's going to take a minute to copy, uh, to move everything. And from there, what we can do so that logic is not lost uh, it still finds everything it needs right there. We, ju we are just going to create a symlink, uh, which is a link from one folder, like one file to another. Um, so while it's copying, I'm going to prepare the command for it. We can, uh, we can just drag and drop, for example, in the terminal, the path to this. So it's a library audio. We see it's uh, right there. And uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, create the link. So I'm going to use the ln command, dash s to tell it it's a steam link. Uh, and then we're going to put the path to, um, to the target of the link, to where the actual files are going to be. So in our case, it's going to be this one, Apple Loops on my hard drive. It's lagging for a second. I don't know why. OK, so I drop it here. You see it copies the whole path here. So that's convenient. And the second argument is where we want to put the link. Uh, so in my case, that would be Apple Loops here. It's just going to create a link with the same name. And if you want to be lazy like me, we can just put dot. And dot is like uh, referencing the current directory. And if you give it a directory, it's just going to create a link with the same name. That's like a bit of technical details. You don't need to know that. Uh, you just know this command is there. And you can do this. You see, like uh, it's completed moving the folders. Now I run this command. It's actually permission denied. So uh, when this happens, you can add sudo in front, type your password. And, uh, and then you can see the link was created. It's got this special icon. And if you click on it, it's the same, like it goes to the to the, the spot on my hard drive, but it looks the same from the system perspective. Logic is going to be happy about that. We can do the exact same thing with the uh, impulse response. And uh, right there, the link was created as well. And now Logic is going to be happy. Uh, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. So then it's like 80 gigs total of uh, data we moved away from our main SSD and we have that room to make something else that's more important than, you know, keeping Apple loops and stuff like this. So uh, that's it for uh, today. That's everything I wanted to share with you. I hope this video was useful, that you learned something and that it's going to help make your life uh, working with Logic more, a little bit more efficient every day. Uh, let me know in the comments if, uh, if you liked it, if you have uh, other tips like this that you use and that you find really useful, really more productive for your day-to-day -day, uh, Logic workflow. Uh, and that's it. In the meantime, I wish you uh, an amazing day and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.